Good morning and welcome to Hear Me, See Me, the 2021 Equity in Missouri Higher Education Summit. My name is Samantha Dickey and I am the Director of Student Success Strategies at the Missouri Department of Higher Education and Workforce Development. I have the pleasure of being the moderator for this presentation by my colleagues from Webster University. Before we get started, some virtual conference etiquette reminders. All participants should stay muted to eliminate background noise. That said, we want to see your faces. If you have a camera, turn it on to better engage with us. All presentations will be live, so bear with us on any technical issues. The chat will be monitored for questions throughout the presentation, so please send those in as you think of them. If you enter a session and decide it's not for you, please close out and head to a different session, just like you would at the in-person conference. All sessions will be recorded, so you will be able to access them after the conference. And don't forget to engage with us on social media using hashtag equity 2021 at M O D H E W D and our new conference website. And now I will turn it over to our presenters. Thank you, Samantha. Good morning, everyone. I'm Joanna Finch, the uh, associate vice president of new student enrollment here at Webster University. And I'm excited to be here with two of my favorite colleagues, Vincent Flew Allen, our chief diversity officer, and Alemuel Harris. He's our associate director of diversity recruitment. Because the three of us have really come together since I started here at Webster to truly be intentional in making changes in the enrollment process and then help carry that through to retain our students, enhancing the access and success of our students and traditionally underrepresented populations across the Metro St. Louis areas and beyond. For Webster, diversity and inclusion are more than meeting a goal um, or focusing on a specific representation with a combination. It involves expressive dialogue and offerings of distinct talent, thought, and inquiry from individuals from various backgrounds. We recognize that diversity and inclusion cultivate academic excellence, and our university also understands the success of each individual strengthens the community. So when we sat down to talk about, you know, what barriers students were facing when they were looking at it, even enrolling in the school, um, and why we were not seeing a larger number of students of color enroll in our traditional undergraduate programs. Um, in 2018, um, I found that there were only about 8% of our incoming freshman class that were students of color. We knew something had to change. So there were several things that we went to administration to discuss and we were greeted with such support and cooperation. First and foremost, of course, is just getting the information out to these students to help them navigate college offerings. I'm going to turn it over to one of my colleagues, Alemuel, to address some of the ways we're addressing access. Alemuel. Awesome. Thanks so much, Ms. Joanna. And so, as Ms. Joanna mentioned, uh, there are a number of gaps when we consider, especially underrepresented population student body here in the St. Louis area. Uh, and beyond really across the country as well. And here at Webster University, we wanna ensure that uh, we are providing as much access, support and resources to our students of color as possible to ensure that they have the very same opportunities uh, and the very same access as other students. So starting off at the very top, you'll see that, uh, well, st stating on the screen, there are a number of barriers listed, starting with the very first barrier of not being able to gain access to the information necessary to navigate the college offerings process or the college selection process. Uh, so the first thing Webster University did, or Ms. Joanna and our team, Vincent Flo, and everybody at, uh, in leadership at Webster University took the opportunity to promote myself or dedicate an individual or primary point person uh, to the North St. Louis County area, as well as the St. Louis area, uh, St. Louis public schools to ensure that students have access uh, in terms of workshops, presentations and really that connect person uh, to really engage with to learn about the admissions process at Webster University, about the application of process at Webster University uh, and the other various offerings uh, that we do offer through the admissions office and uh, through Webster University as a whole. Um, so being the point person at Webster University, I have the opportunity of connecting with all of my high school counselors through St. Louis City, um, St. Louis Public Schools as well to share presentations uh, with the various high schools, whether that's presentations about financial aid, workshops on finding the right fit, 
as well as helping families navigate the college waters, whether that's the application process, as well as the financial aid process and various things like that. Another barrier that we did find was being able to afford the application fees. Uh, of course, you all know that when students are going through the college selection process, they are uh, connecting with tons of admissions reps and going to visit many various colleges across the country uh, and what have you. Uh, and so they complete a number of applications. And of course, with admissions or college applications, there is an associated application fee. Uh, so, to ensure that students are able to apply to the various schools that they want to apply to uh, and be able to, to have the opportunity to go visit those high schools and various things like that as well, we did eliminate our application fee. Uh, so, there is no longer an application fee connected and students are now able to apply on our website completely free of charge um, so that they could use those funds for other things as it pertains to the college selection process as well. Another another barrier that we did find uh, is a lack or no ACT scores or lower ACT scores or what have you. Uh, and so Webster also took the advantage uh, of going test optional uh, over the last two years. Uh, and so at the present moment, every student who is admitted into Webster has the opportunity to either apply with test scores or test optional uh, to have that fair opportunity to, to get have a fair, fair shot, fair shot, fair shake at education, um, like every other student does as well. And then lastly, one other barrier that we did find was a lack of access to receive one on one interaction and information from our admissions team due to being unable to make it to campus. Uh, and so me as an individual point person, I have the opportunity of connecting with well, any student who is interested in Webster University uh, through high school visits, uh, via phone calls, via other communication channels as well. Um, and Zoom has become very prevalent over the last one or two years. I've had the opportunity to correct, connect with almost every single one of my students because of Zoom, uh, whether that's assisting them through the application process, the admissions process, or connecting to go line by line in detail by detail through their financial aid packages and various things like that. And Alemuel, can you kind of explain a little bit about like what you're doing right now with the fair that you're at and how you're doing on site reviews? Absolutely. So Webster University and the Office of Admissions has given me the opportunity to really expand my, my territory and expand my borders. So right now I have the opportunity and I am, in so many words, traveling with infinite scholars across the country uh, and having the opportunity. So in the last, I would say four weeks, I've had the opportunity to hit four different cities. I've had the opportunity to see many students in Detroit, in Chicago, Illinois, Kansas City, Missouri, uh, and now I am here in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, and I've had the opportunity to connect with thousands of students over this last month uh, to share the message of Webster University, all the different college offerings that we have from our different majors to our to the amazing scholarships, uh, which you'll learn more about in detail a little farther into the presentation. Uh, so just really having the opportunity and Webster University and the Office of Admissions really entrusted me um, to take on this role and this position as the Associate Director to really uh, to accomplish the goals uh, of the organization and of the University, Webster University. So. And even yeah. more than that, he's got the opportunity to review on site their mm -hmm. um, different transcripts and award scholarships to the students while they're there. So he's able to meet with the students so that they don't necessarily have to come to campus to get that information, which has been nice. The other thing I want to mention is about the application fee. So it's not just a matter of waiving an application fee. A lot of schools do that for students that aren't able to afford it. But for us, it was more about leveling the playing field. I, I never want a student to have to feel awkward in explaining their financial situation or their struggles with us. So we just removed it for everybody because it's not something that I wanted to create a barrier for. Um, so that was an important part of it. Um, the next thing we're gonna talk about is just our financial opportunities. And I'm gonna turn that over to Vincent to discuss. Thanks, Joanne, and good morning to everyone. Um, I really, I, I would be remiss if I did not uh, take this opportunity to, to to publicly share that the work that we are doing uh, now is phenomenal and it's great, but it's largely and and because of Joanna Finch, uh, as she recently joined us uh, here at the university a couple of years ago, 
she's been very intentional. And I think intentionality is a big part of this work, right? We have to, we must be very intentional and thoughtful about the work that we are doing and the why, right? And so Joanna, uh, in coming in, obviously the idea that, you know, she promoted Elimuel uh, to be very uh, specific and targeted um, the the African American students of color communities uh, across not only St. Louis regionally but across the country, as evidenced by his uh, visits. But she also thought in terms of our scholarships and the ways in which we increase financial opportunity um, for all students, right? But again, specifically thinking about our students of color, our Black and Brown students, and how do we, as she said, create access to opportunities that will lead to success. And so one of, you know, there were several things that she did as it relates to our scholarships um, that are particularly for our students of color. Um, we have here in St. Louis, uh, many uh, colleges and universities offer what are called the Dr. Donald M. Suggs scholarships. And those are institutional dollars. They are dollars that the institution sets aside to honor Dr. Donald Suggs, who is a local um, uh, dentist, uh, but he, for those of you in the area, if you're familiar with the St. Louis American newspaper, he is the publisher of it, uh, president and CEO as well. And so, and a longtime uh, friend of Webster University's. We previously, um, about seven years ago, we started uh, the Suggs Scholarship. And at that time we had one scholar and we had that one scholar a year, we would uh, enroll a new scholar each year. And that scholar uh, received a partial tuition. A couple of years after that, we increased it to two Sug scholars each year, also still receiving a partial scholarship. Well, Joanna, um, two years ago, came to the chancellor and me and, and, and proposed the idea of our increasing the number of offerings of Sug scholars um to 10 uh and and making them full tuition uh our chancellor our president our leadership immediately endorsed that idea and we are now on our second cohort of incoming freshmen who are at the count of 10 each um that we identify as such scholars that's a 1.14 million dollar investment in those students. Um, what we know is that if you invest and provide opportunities for success uh, for not only the student will they succeed and, and, and be transformed, their families will be, as well as their communities. And so it's a great uh, testament of that work and our commitment, which leads us to then the St. Louis Community Scholarship. And that is an additional $2,500 awarded to merit-based uh, scholars uh, who are coming to us from North St. Louis County, as well as other parts of uh, North St. Louis. Again, being very intentional about our demographics. I should say this also about our Donald Sugg Scholarship. It is uh, one of our most com uh, highest and competitive scholarships. Students who apply for it go through an interview process as they do for another scholarship that is of equal uh, footing, and that's the Chancellor's Scholarship. Uh, we also have increased our merit-based scholarships, um, going from $13,000 to $19,000, and those are automatically awarded at the time of admission. And so, again, increasing our financial aid uh, relationships with the admissions office as well, right? And so being able to better communicate to those that we uh, accept so that they know immediately what their financial um, uh, commitments would be here and our financial supports from the university. Thank you, Vincent. And it does take a team. So I have been very appreciative of the support that I've received from the leadership here, from Vincent, from Alemuel, all of us working together to make these things happen. And we've seen some really good results from it. Um, another thing that we did is uh, it was very important to me that when students come to visit the campus that they're greeted and they can see themselves represented in our student body. Um, it's important to find the right fit. So I intentionally started hiring more students of color for our admissions guides, our Gorlock guides, to provide equity and employment opportunities here for our students, but also to see an overall comfort 
level for our prospective students as they move throughout the admissions process. These changes have really helped in increase our recruitment efforts in that in 2021, fall of 2021, we increased our incoming class of students of color to 22%. So if you remember in the beginning, we talked about 2018 was 8% and now we're at 22%. So for me, it was such a, a great thing to see that much growth. Um, not only are we seeing it, but our current students are noticing it and commenting on how great it is. Um, which is why our next piece is even more crucial. We can get students to come to school, um, but access has to lead to success here at Webster. So Vincent, if you could share with us just a little bit about some of the things that we're doing here at Webster. Sure. Uh, we, we started a program uh, here in partnership with various offices across and colleagues across the campus called RISE, and it's Resilience Inspires Student Excellence. And if you think of that program, initially we started that program with the intent of really focusing in on some of our African-American students. I think you all are aware that Webster, like um, many other uh, colleges and universities across the country, um, African-American males in particular, um, the retention rates and graduation rates for them are among the lowest um, uh, of students. And so we, we focused in initially on trying to uh, wrap ourselves around with great supports for those students. Um, then COVID happened, right? And, and so we were no longer able to really do that, which we had planned, but um, we were able to take last year and kind of re envision and reimagine the rise program. One of the things that we did hear from, uh, while we were still on campus. Voices from our, our, our women, right? Who said we too want some supports. We too want a sense of community. And so this year rise has expanded and it now includes all of our students of color. Um, uh, but, you know, we, some of the things that happen in rise, for instance. Uh, they have to check in monthly with me, and that's just a quick check in, but we have a dedicated staff person, Larry Morris, who regularly meets with them. We offer homework study support. Uh, they receive sort of like speed passes. If you think in terms of going to Six Flags or to Disney World and you buy that speed pass so that you can move quickly through the line, well, they receive a speed pass. Just actually last night, uh, I reached out to our academic advisor contact. So academic advisor, each department has identified a key staff person, right? That RISE students can be immediately in touch with uh, and, and receive assistance. So I sent an email to, to, to our colleague, Craig, who then I, I, I told him the details of a particular student. He has already reached out to that student and is assisting that student. This student is seven credits short of graduating, seven credits short works full-time, is a part-time student here as a transfer, right? And has a lot of things going on in her life. And she's thinking about stepping away. She's seven credits away, right? And so Craig is going to assist her. In my call with her last night, I asked her, you know, how are you on housing right now? How are you on food? How are you on, you know, mental health? What are the other areas of concern? And she was very honest and said, it's just the financial piece and, and her work balance piece right now. But we will wrap our arms around her and Craig will do a great job. But as I said, counseling, we even have someone over in the library who is dedicated as the lead research assistant uh, for our students there. Um, on campus barbershop. So our black male students, we are located, and this may be true for some of you all, in areas in which that are, while we consider it to still be urban, right? We still say we are in St. Louis. Webster Groves is a small suburb outside of Webster Groves or outside of St. Louis City, I'm sorry. And there are no black barbers here in, in, in Webster Groves. And, and, and that's an important piece, right? And so our, we heard from our black parents, we heard from our black students that they wanted to have access to a barber shop. And so I reached out to my own barber, my barber through our RISE program initially, but now it is also expanded, um, comes, we cover for rise males. We we take care of two 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 cuts of theirs a month, 
right? We know that self-esteem and all that is correlated and connected to success and positive confidence in yourself. Don't let me get a haircut and a car wash on a Saturday. I'm like on top of the world, right? And so we want students to have that same sense of, of, of pride. Um, today, in fact, uh, a group of students are, are taking a tour of a space that we have identified that we are going to convert uh, to a space for all of our BIPOC students and some of our other marginalized uh, identities, such as our LGBT community uh, students, so that they can actually gather. And so they are right now uh, looking at that space, telling me what they need in terms of furniture, television, uh, what are the little other pieces. It's easy for me to go in and say, oh, we're going to paint this, this color, we're going to buy this color. But if they have no ownership in it in the process, they won't engage in it. And so we, I've, I've turned that over to them. And so I will get a list at the end of the day of those things that they need. We will price them and we will get them set up for that. Um, we are working constantly uh, with, with the community uh, in terms of providing and receiving assistance for our students. We have a food pantry on campus. There, there are processes of um, which people can donate clothing, right? For interviews, for just, you know, it's cold, it's getting cold and I don't have a coat, right? And we are creating spaces where they can do that. Um, very low key, go in and grab and get what they need. Um, it's really, really important. In terms of some of our additional campus wide initiatives, um, these, programs that we offer for our faculty and staff to also help them better understand and meet students where they are. Um, equity is obviously a key important part of education. So we have partnered with an organization here, the YWCA of Metropolitan St. Louis. They offer a wonderful program called Witnessing Whiteness. And Witnessing Whiteness is based on a book by um, Shelley Touchlick. She actually wrote it for her dissertation. It's pretty heady, um, but, the YWCA has trained hundreds of white facilitators to engage in conversation with other white people about white privilege, about racism, about the cost of racism, the effects of racism. And it, they are able to do it in an, over a 10 week period in a space that is safe for them to openly have those conversations in which they can speak freely without the fear of offending any of their colleagues of color or other people of color. Now, this is a program that uh, the YWCA offers across Metro St. Louis. I have intentionally asked and partnered with the YWCA to open up a cohort that is specific and, and made up of only Webster University faculty and staff. We are actually on our third cohort of, uh, of that. We meet, uh, it opens every fall. And so we are about 60, 60 folks or so have, are, you know, have experienced that. Annually, I'm really proud that one of the most uh, signature events of the university is our Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Conference. Um, this year, uh, in February, we will be hosting our seventh. It's February 28th through March 2nd. It's free. It's open to the public. Um, our advancement team is working hard at securing uh, sponsorships so that we can continue to keep it free. We even, in fact, feed folks a lunch. Um, and so we encourage you all to join us for that. Uh, you can learn more about that at uh, webster.edu uh, forward slash uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. We also host uh, I host a, a monthly online speaking series called Webster Speaks Dialogues on Race, Equity, and Inclusion. Um, and what's wonderful about that is an opportunity for me, along with my guests who are all of color, uh, to really amplify our voices around issues that impact um, Black Americans uh, or people of color. My show upcoming in November will actually look at uh, the challenges that uh, immigrants face in America, right? Um, so we'll talk about Haitian, Haitian, Haitian immigrants, and we'll talk about uh, Bosnian, uh, Afghani Im immigrants, and just talk about some of those experiences that they have, as well as some of the challenges that they have, uh, and how race, in fact, in times may play a part of that. This October show, we looked at health, 
um, and uh, looked at the ways in which COVID has dramatically and drastically impacted the African American community. Um, and we are continuing to build our relationship with our alumni and particularly our black alumni and providing mentorship programs and opportunities for them. We heard from our students that they wanted to engage more closely with our black alumni. And so um, those are just a few of them. Thank you. Thanks. Just for the sake of time, I'm going to let you hear from one of our alumni here um, and then we'll. Open the I became involved with Webster as a community member because of its commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. I know that the folks here at Webster are committed to values that are important to me. Diversity, equity, and inclusion comes up at the board level and it comes up at the administration level, which is what inspires me. It gives me comfort to know that I'm investing my time and my money in an organization that really is going to advance um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. I think that Webster University provides many opportunities and ways for members of the community to get involved. For example, they can tune in to Webster Speaks, which is an online conversation, uh, panel discussions where individuals are having difficult conversations about race and equity. Webster also has a conference that it hosts every year, a DEI conference that is always well attended, great speakers, great topics. That's a great way for individuals to become involved. So I'm going to leave this up here. I would like to open the floor if you have any questions at all, but it's really important that everybody get involved to help eliminate the equity gap. Um, so, how can you get involved? Of course, going back to your own alma mater and becoming a mentor, educating yourself, as Vincent talked about the YWCA's Witnessing Whiteness program. It's something for you maybe to investigate. Um, and then participating in conferences just like ours at the diversity conference. Um, but most importantly, be intentional. Um, for me, it is so important that we're intentional about everything that we do. Um, to find areas that have gaps and just make sure that we're filling those and evaluating things on a regular basis just to make sure that everything is covered and that there's no barriers that may come up. So that is our presentation. So if there's any questions, Samantha, we'd be happy to answer those. All right, I'm going to ask my own question while those who are in the audience um, submit their questions in the chat. So, um, when you went test optional, did you also go back then and look at your financial aid um, offerings to kind of make sure that, you know, you weren't disadvantaging students in their financial aid packages because they didn't need a ACT or SAT score to be admitted? No, we actually, we treat every student the same. So, if you have an ACT score or you don't have an ACT score, we take a very holistic approach to our looking at our students and evaluating them. So the rigor of their high school program, how involved they were, um, you know, what they have to say when they're meeting with us. And, you know, we do have a short essay that was involved in the process. So there were a few changes that were made to the process itself, but overall, um, every student is treated the same, whether they have it or not. The only thing that's different is for competitive scholarships. Those aren't requiring an ACT. Got it. Thank you. So there is another question in the chat. Can the team talk a little about any specific outreach or recruitment and access initiatives for adult learners or stopped out students? Sure. Uh, Lemuel, do you have anything you want to add? You're on mute. I'm sorry. No, ma'am, I'll let you go first. <laughs> um, so when it comes to adult learners, we definitely want to help individuals get back into school, um, and especially for those that have stopped out. So if you've started your education and you want to come back to school, whether you've started it at Webster or anywhere else, um, we do have an adult program here that allows you to go to school. We have campuses all over the United States. We have two in St. Louis at Westport and downtown at Gateway. 
and you would work with our advising team um, along with our admissions team to help determine like what's the best program for you and how many classes you would need to complete that program. So we definitely work with um, all ages. And I okay. do have to mention we have a great academic resource center as well, the REIT Center. So Erica Ellard is our director of that center and her team does an amazing job to work with our students. So we're very, very lucky to have them. Vincent, were you going to add something? I was just going to uh, inform everyone if they had not noted that in the chat, I've listed uh, two links, one for the Webster Speaks program that I referenced, as well as the other for the DEI conference. Awesome. All right, I still don't see any other questions in the chat. Um, you know, do you guys have any parting words for us? Give everyone a few more minutes and then we'll, we can wrap things up. Um, again, my parting words are always going to say, be intentional about everything that you do. And, and, and to also, you know, find supports across your campus or, you know, colleagues at other spaces and other campuses, right? To reach out to them. Um, I think part of that intentionality, which, you know, I've mentioned and Joanna has just reminded us of is also being very intentional about communicating and thinking through the process, right? And so to raise the questions, to be open to the feedback, to the pushback that may even come, right? And, and, and to, Realize that while we may have some of our best of intentions and in wanting to do, um, sometimes they fall short, right? And we have to be willing to accept that. But I think we can also prevent those from happening by really making sure that we have done our best at uh, touching base, right? And so listening to students, we've listened to students here at Webster, you know, um, there are listening sessions that occur regularly um, with our administration listening to students, with staff listening to students, with faculty listening to students, and really getting a sense of what their needs are. Um, you know, as cool and as hip as I think, you know, I might be, right? The reality of it is I'm 50 years old, right? And that's a huge difference uh, in life experiences and, and expectations than, than where our 19, 18 year old students are today. And so I need to have them tell me what they need Right, and then somewhere in the middle for us to then try to design around that and to meet them where they are. And I know I'm cool and hip, so I don't have to worry about it, but. <laughs> but I do still enjoy listening to the students. We actually are a very large part of St. Louis graduates and as a team here at Webster, we have a group and our students are a big part of that. So as we meet monthly. We listen to the students and find out what are the barriers that they're facing and you know, challenges that they're hearing about in different offices and making sure that each of the offices are, you know, creating that equity across the board and, and ensuring that students are given the opportunity to voice those concerns. And not every conversation is going to be comfortable, um, but the fact that we're willing to have those conversations makes the difference. Yes, I will actually say, and I appreciate you mentioning St. Louis graduates, um, you know, because of our, re the resources that we've committed and, and, and our overall commitment to assuring, you know, um, access, the promise that we make of access to success. Uh, we were recently recognized last year by St. Louis graduates for enrolling significant percentages of low income students and black students and supporting them to graduate with less debt. Um, and so finding those ways to support, right, um, is critical. Thank you. I saw the applause, Sam. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again to our presenters and to our audience for such great questions and participation. It is now time to get up and take a break, stretch your legs, grab a refill and a snack, and be sure to join us for the next breakout sessions. They are sure to be full of great information. You can access those sessions using the conference landing website, which I'm going to put in the chat. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. for joining us. Thank you.